Welcome back to building a full stack application from scratch. This is an in rhythm U Zoom Lightning talk. In this third video, we'll be talking about infrastructure deployment, deploying those Docker images to AWS Elastic Container Service. Rather than speaking about functionality of the recruiting software we were building, let's talk about infrastructure as code and some of the benefits. Infrastructure as code allows for automated deployment. We'll be using a tool called Terraform to specify the resources and the variables and the infrastructure declaratively. This enables consistent environments, a repeatable process, reusable components. Ultimately, it leads to a documented system architecture so that people in the future will know how the system was constructed. For those that are not familiar with Elastic Container Service, it's first composed of a cluster, which holds all services and tasks, then services, which holds on to these task definitions, and finally tasks that hold on to those Docker containers. The infrastructure we'll be setting up is a virtual private cloud, also known as VPC, an internet gateway, which exposes access to the resources within this VPC, an application load balancer, which is configured to speak directly to the Fargate tasks, a network address translation gateway, which allows private subnet tasks to communicate back to the outside world, the Elastic Service Container Cluster, which composes all of the services and tasks we spoke about. The tasks will be done in Fargate as opposed to in EC2. And then lastly, we'll set up a relational database service um, Postgres instance. To get started building all this infrastructure, you'll need to install Homebrew, Terraform, preferably the latest version 0 0.12, 24, Python, as well as the AWS CLI. Let's talk about Terraform for a moment. It's awesome. It has the ability to specify variables and resources and make things super clear and declarative. Here's an example on the screen of setting up the AWS region, the access key, the seeker key, and some more variables. Next up within Terraform, you'll need to set up a provider. In this case, we're using AWS, where we pass in those variables, the region key, the access key, and the secret key. Next up, we'll configure our VPC, public and private subnets. You can see a resource that's specified here, AWS VPC main, and you're given the side or a block. Also, we set up this private subnet as well as a public subnet. I can now hop on over into my VS Code terminal and because Terraform is so mm -hmm. awesome, I can issue a Terraform plan command and it's smart enough to know the current state of previously executed commands. So it's currently refreshing its state and then giving me a list of changes to be made. With those list of, list of changes in mind, I can now go ahead and review that plan and say Terraform apply, and it'll tell me what changes will be made. I've gone ahead and applied those changes and a new VPC has been created. Now we're going to set up an internet and NAT gateways. The internet gateway provides access into the public subnet, routing that public subnet traffic in through this internet gateway. Then we set up this NAT gateway with an elastic IP for each private subnet to get the internet connectivity. The internet gateway has been created by taking the Terraform command and applying it. Now this is just the starting point. It's like poking a hole in the VPC. It doesn't actually point to any resources yet. We'll do that later when we set up the application load balancer. I've gone ahead and created the NAT gateway as well, as you can see. 
next step would be setting up routing tables so that you can route private traffic in the private subnets and that's non-local out back to the internet through the SNAP gateway, explicitly associating the newly created route tables so that they don't go through the main routing tables. The routing tables have been created. Next up is creating an application load balancer. This is the front end to all the ECS tasks that we're running in Fargate. You can see that it's running in a public subnet. It has access to a security group. This is a non-secure example. So traffic from port 80 will come in over HTTP and the load balancer will be checking each of the containers for a health check. We will also redirect all traffic from the ALB to the target group, which happens to be our Docker container. This client port is the same port 3000 that our client was previously running on. By reissuing the Terraform plan and apply commands, the ALB has been created. We're gonna to wanna to secure this ALB by issuing a resource tag and stating the from and to ports for the ingress or the traffic into the ALB and then providing all outbound traffic out to the internet. The ALB security groups have been created. Next up, we'll set up an RDS database by giving it a name in the form of an identifier, choosing which flavor of RDS, for example, Postgres, which version, 9, 6, 10, 11, an instance class to run on, because we'll keep the cost down, we'll probably do a T2 small, how much storage, whether it's multi-availability zone, some more settings, including username and password, security groups, et cetera. Terraform plan and apply has been done. A new database has been created. Next up, we'll create some ECR repositories. These will hold our Docker images that we have on our local. So two resources here, one for the user interface image and one for the service image. The two Docker repositories have been created. Let's set up CloudWatch by creating log groups, one for the client log group and one for the service log group. They're pretty straightforward to create and they've been set up. For this talk, we're just gonna use a basic IAM role for ECS tasks, the ECS task execution role and applying a policy to it. There's an opportunity to go much more deeper with IAM security, but we'll just keep it really simple for this talk. IAM roles for ECS tasks have been set up. We wanna route traffic from our ALB into our ECS tasks, this HTTP port to client port. So the next step is to configure a resource for an AWS security group specifically for ECS tasks. Security groups have been set up. A couple tips here. They start with SG dash and some number, and you'll use these, that key uh, throughout the infrastructure, or at least Terraform will do that automatically for you. Um, security groups are found under the EC2 menu option. That may not be clear, especially since we're using Fargate, we're not actually using EC2 servers, it's all serverless. And lastly, all the security groups are applied to the VPC. All right, we're in the home stretch. Now the fun begins. We're gonna create an ECS cluster by declaring that resource. I just called it main. Then we're gonna set up ECS container templates where you can see I have a bit of JSON here and I'm passing in variables to give a name of ECS task pointing to an image, which happens to be that ECR repository, configuring it with CPU and memory, the VPC, the log that we've set up and mapping ports from container to host, which should be equal to each other. We'll apply that template by making data out of it, passing in variables for the service, as well as all the generic variables, and then using that in a task definition such that we're basically just rendering that data into this Terraform resource. And we'll do the same thing on the, the exact same thing on the client. It's the same repeatable pattern. With a Terraform plan and apply, voila, 
ECS tasks are running in Fargate. A couple things to note though, since we created the RDS database, I had to go back into that server image on that project and config the host that can no longer be local host. And also note that the client is running on port 3000 and the server is running on 2999. Finally, it's important to note that those ECS tasks are running because the Docker images were tagged and pushed to those ECR repositories. If you do get prompted to log in, a really helpful command here is get login password. Here's a screenshot of the app and up and running in the AWS infrastructure. There are lots of possibilities for quote unquote deeper talks. There's security and certificate management, setting up HTTPS, advanced networking, deploying greater than one container per task, auto scaling ECS tasks based on CPU, going deeper into React, deeper into TypeScript, or deeper into NOAA, sorry, Node, COA, and Type ORM. Hopefully I've, I've inspired you to take these starter packs and these generic talks and go further. Thank you for listening. This completes the third video on building a full stack TypeScript app from scratch. Mm -hmm.